Welcome back, everyone, and Happy New Year. Welcome to 2024. We're going to kick off the year by doing this little watercolor painting of a blue jay. Now, there is a lot of steps to this painting, so I went ahead and broke it down into chapters for you. And I've also included um, a photo reference and a drawing in the description below that you can print out if you would like to follow along. So let's go ahead and get started with the painting. All right, so this is the little blue jay that we're going to be using as a reference photo. I took this photograph some number of years ago when I was in Colorado, but I like the photograph a lot because it's really nice and clear, but I don't like the composition. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change the composition. So before I started making a bunch of changes to the, to the drawing, I decided to do a little bit more research on blue jays. And I found... A really good YouTube site is by Leslie the Bird Nerd, and I looked at two videos of hers. Uh, the first one is Five Weird and Funny Things About Blue Jays, and then the second one was Ten Fun Facts About Blue Jays. And not only did I learn about the birds, but when you're using videos, you're basically looking at thousands of photographs all at once, and you can see movement, but you can also pause movement. And that allows you to really see how the birds move, you know, how big they are. You can kind of look at perspective, especially when they start, like, moving their wings around, right? Because they're not always going to be wide open or closed, so sometimes they're going to be somewhere in between. And it kind of gives you a better idea as to what type of changes you can make. So you can see in this particular page... I did a lot of little drawings and I did some markings. So when you do your research, you don't always have to color everything. You can just write yourself some little notes that will help you later. And then I went ahead and started working on some thumbnail sketches to kind of figure out which composition I wanted to do. And it was, it was a toss up between these two. This is very similar to the photograph and I just changed the angle here. So, not not thrilled about that one. So I'm either going to go with this one or this one. Um, ultimately, it came down to the scope of the video. So um, I decided to go with this one right here because this one involves a lot of uh, uh, perspective and we're not ready to work on that yet. So this is the one that I'm going to be showing you how to do. All right, here's our tip of the day. Since I know I'm going to be making a lot of changes to the pose of this bird, I wanted to make sure that I got my proportions right. So I took a sheet of tracing paper and I traced it, traced the, the main components of the bird. And then I'm using what is called a unit of measure and I'm using the head as my unit of measure. So I took a little extra piece of paper, measured this little piece, and then I used that to measure all the other stuff. So in this case, the body from here to here is only three heads tall. But the wing and the tail are both four heads tall. So that's gonna make sure that I don't make the wings too short or the tail too long. Um, it's gonna really help me, especially when I start making changes to the pose. Um, you don't have to do every single little thing like the eye and the feet and all that. Get your big stuff done, and then once you get your big stuff done, it's super easy to figure out where the smaller um, details are going to go. The next thing that I need to do is I need to go from this pose to this pose right here. So I've already established my composition grid. So I've divided the paper into thirds this way and this way right here, and that's more or less just to help me with the composition, okay? And then I'm gonna have all of this stuff handy. Now I am gonna try to make this bigger. So I'm gonna have to figure out the maximum proportions that I can go. Now this is not a drawing tutorial, so I'm not gonna show you too, too much on here, but I wanna show you at least how I got this started. I'm gonna use this area right here for the head, right? because I want this to be kind of like an L-shaped composition. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off lightly. I'm gonna draw a little bit darker so you guys can see it, but normally I would do this very lightly. And I wanna establish the size of the circle, okay? 
Then, just like I did with this little guy, I'm going to measure that to get my new size. Okay, so this is the head. Now, I'm gonna see if I can actually get the bird to fit here. If not, I'm gonna have to shrink that. So, the line of action is actually doing this like so okay so i need to go three heads from the neck to the base of the body so if i go here i can go one two three one. so already i know that this is not going to fit okay so rather than erasing everything i still want to keep my line of action so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to shrink the size of the head. And measure that one. So we're gonna go from here to here and see if that works. So we're gonna go one, two, three. So, so far, so good. And then, one, two, three, four. So I think this is going to work just fine. And so this is the actual size that we're gonna need, okay? So, let's start working on the body. Here, one, two, three, roughly here is where the body's gonna stop, okay? Doesn't have to be exact, but the whole point of using these measurements is to give us a general idea as to how things are gonna be, or the proportions of how big things are gonna be. So this is the body. And, or you can make it like this, okay? Now, the wing, or the tail, excuse me, is gonna come from this side. So I want to measure four heads based on this measured foreheads and see to make sure that we have enough room. And yes, that's plenty. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and continue this line to about here. And that will be more or less where the tail's gonna go. And you'll notice this is very rough right now, okay? Next thing that I need to do is I need to measure for the wings. And the wings, we measure from about here, it looks like. And we need to go four, and we're going on this angle also here. So, let's go ahead and measure that. One, two, three, and four right there. So this right here roughly will be the location of the wing. And then the wing comes this way, drops at an angle, and it goes on top of the tail. Okay. And actually I think I measured the tail from the wrong spot I did. I need to measure the tail roughly. Let's see, one, two, three, four, right about the base of the belly. So from there. So one, two, three, oh, I missed one, four. So I thought so when I first looked at this, it's like, it seems short, but the tail's actually gonna come all the way to here, okay? So again, all of this is better to take care of this now before you actually start on doing the details than after you do the details and you realize, wait, well, this is like way off. From this point on, it's just a matter of starting to make my adjustments.
I feel like the head is a little small. So the height is good, but I think the width is off. So before I make, this head is way too small. So before I uh, make changes, I'm gonna show you what I did. I took the original size here, one inch, and measure from here to here. And you'll notice that is one and a half. So on mine, it was one. So I need to go one, which is here, and I need to add a half. So that means that head has got to come all the way to there, right? Which means that when I make that change, I'm gonna have to make some changes down here as well, okay? So it's better for me to see this now um, than after I do all of the markings and everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this change and you're gonna see a significant difference. So now that makes a lot more sense. And now it's just a matter of finishing up the details. So I wanted to make sure that you guys saw that because that was kind of an important an important um, lesson, right? Which is why sometimes it's important to use something like this to get your proportions right. All right, so I went ahead and took a moment and did a little bit of inking on here and more just to make sure that all of my lines are easy to see when I get ready to transfer it onto the watercolor paper. So on the right, you can see what the composition is going to look like. And on the left, you can see what we originally started with. So I'm going to go ahead and put both these references, uh, put a link to both these references below. That way, if you would like to follow along with the painting portion of this, you can just download these and um, trace them onto the watercolor paper and then follow along. All right. So we have our picture. I've already transferred it onto the watercolor paper. I have my reference photo ready to go and we're just about ready to start painting. Now there are some areas of this bird that are really, really bright. So I am gonna be using a little bit of the liquid frisket to protect those areas. Just a couple of reminders, if you use the frisket, Use a little bit of soap on your brush to make it easier to clean. This is just dishwashing liquid. And always use inexpensive brushes like this. Don't use your good quality brushes. And as soon as you're done, make sure that you clean the brush so that hopefully the frisket won't damage your brushes. So just take a little bit dishwashing liquid, put a little dab in your hand, load up the brush thoroughly, really work that into the brush. And now you can start applying the frisket. The liquid, uh, the dishwashing liquid, will not hurt the frisket. So now, when you put the frisket on, you don't really, you're just trying to protect certain areas. So when you look at your reference picture that I've included, pick out the areas that are the brightest. You don't have to do every single little thing. So there's a really bright area here. There's bright areas on the wings that I really wanna to try to keep nice and bright. So right in this area here, all of this right here. On this side, you don't see it as much, but there's a same type of white patch over here. And if you accidentally put frisket somewhere where it doesn't belong, it's not a big deal. Because later on when you're painting and you take the frisket off, if you realize that there is not supposed to be white, you can just paint over it. So I do want to keep this little section here fairly white. Then I can always adjust it. And then down here on the very bottom of this tail here, this tail feather. That's a nice bright white, really, really nice bright white area. And 
near the bottom of the wings here, there's also a bright area right about there. And that's it. The stomach, it looks white on the picture, but there's actually a little bit of gray and brown in it. So it's not going to stay pure white. So I don't have to worry about that. And that's, that's really all about it. Okay. So now I got to let this dry. It only takes a few minutes to dry and then we'll be ready to start working on the background. All right. The brisket is nice and dry. So we are ready to start working on the background. So in the background, I want to keep it soft and I want to keep some fall colors in it, which will really help offset the blue colors of the blue jay. And I'm just going to keep it nice and simple. Use a little bit of salt for to diffuse some of the stuff, but that's it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mist the whole thing with a spray bottle. Now, I didn't stretch this paper because I'm not going to be doing a ton of wet on wet. So I didn't really feel the need to soak the paper. I'm using the 100% um, the cotton paper, just like I did on the last project. Really felt it did a really nice job. And uh, so I wanted to use it again. So all I did, I'm using my, this is the three quarter inch brush. And I'm just kind of like smoothing out some of these areas. And I'm letting the water kind of soak into the paper a little bit. All right, so now I can start working with the colors. So I'm gonna, I wanna stay with the fall colors. So I wanna kind of start off with some cadmium red lights. Maybe a little bit of yellow in there in the cad yellow lights. And I don't want these colors to get too much onto the bird because they're opposite of the blue. And if it gets too much on the bird, then the bird will turn kind of brownish on me. So I'm gonna keep a little bit of a gap here for now. And, and I'm just gonna vary these colors and I'm gonna let these kind of fade into the background area. So I don't need to worry too much about painting every single square inch. All right, so we have the background completely done and it's nice and dry and we are ready to start blocking in the little blue jay. So, I'm going to use my reference photo here to kind of show you what I'm going to do. And you can see right in this area right here that the stomach and the chest are not pure white. There's got a little bit of brownish tint to it. And then when we look at the wings and the tail, there's a lot of uh, like a phthalo blue color. And then, of course, we have the black markings and the white markings. And then this area here is going to be kind of like a purplish gray. So I'm going to go ahead and block those things in. And then um, we'll let it dry and then start working on the details. And whenever I work with watercolors, I like to start from light to dark. Because it's always much easier to add some darkness than it is to try and lighten something up. Now, one thing I have noticed about this paper is the, it takes a lot longer to dry, though. So you do have more time to mix colors, which is a, you know, a bonus, but some of the effects don't work as well as when you do it on the watercolor paper. So the salt effect that I normally do and, and get really good results with on the uh, watercolor paper does not do as well on this 100% cotton stuff. Uh, and I'm not really sure why. So it's really hard to see. So I may have to change um, how I do the background or edit the background a little later. Remember that when you work with watercolors, the, water, the colors tend to dry a little bit lighter than they look on when you first put them on. So 
there are times where you put something on and you come back and you're like it doesn't you lose the effect so sometimes you have to uh, hit it again or sometimes you just have to put it on a little bit darker than you think at the beginning and the reference photo is there to help you so it's not like you have to copy exactly every single little thing that you see but you do want to get you know, a close proximity if you're working with realism. Now, if you're not doing realism, then you can change it any way you want to. Okay. There's lots and lots of different ways that you can uh, paint with watercolors. So you just got to find a method that works best for you. And as you become more experienced and you start learning new methods, you might change them up or combine them. Now we do need to lift a little bit right there just to make it brighter. So a little bit of just a clean brush and think of it as erasing. So when I say lift, all we're doing is taking some of the paint off. So, and we do that with just a brush and water. That's it. So I didn't stretch this paper, but I still like to, um, put it on the board and the reason for that is because when I work with watercolors I often have to raise and lower um, the watercolors depending on what I'm trying to do and it's much easier to do it while the paper is taped onto a board than it is um, if the paper is by itself because it kind of folds and bends and yeah so that's why you always see me having these things on a board. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Like this one is just a little piece of cardboard that I keep around. But if you have a drawing board, those work really well. Now, if I wanted to, I could have created a barrier between the background and the, and the bird by using the liquid frisket, but I decided not to. I kind of enjoy mixing colors and I don't want them all to always be the same. So that's one of the big reasons why I don't pre-mix everything. I'd much rather mix on the paper. Yeah. All right, so now I'm gonna let this dry and then we can start building up the details and really making this thing stand out. Now we can actually start building up the layers. So I took a few minutes and um, kind of did a little bit of pencil work to kind of pull out some of these areas that I need to separate from each other. And I want to take care of this now before I actually do the black markings. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we got our second layer down and now we can really see how this bird is starting to pop. So the next thing that I wanna do is I just wanna go ahead and start working on those dark markings, those black markings. And I'm gonna be using mostly my number two brush and it's just a matter of putting in the marks. The big thing when you're putting in the marks, especially when you get to the, to the wings and to the tail, you don't wanna go straight across. The, the wings and the tails have a little bit of a curvature so you wanna kinda of include that to make the, the marks look like they're going around the wing and the tail rather than through it. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit, show you guys how to get this started, and then I'll pass forward through the rest because this is pretty easy to do, it's just tedious.
So I took the masking off so that you can see exactly what we got. And you can see it's a pretty close approximation to the original um, reference. Um, really, from here on out, it's just a matter of doing some editing, adjusting the shape of the white areas, putting in cast shadows, darkening up certain areas to create better contrast. So I'm going to be doing that, but that's like super tedious. So I'm just going to do that and then um, speed through that so you guys can actually see the changes. And then we'll come back when it's all done and see what we got. All right, I think I'm gonna call this one done. Um, at least done for now. Usually what I do when I get done with a painting, I put it aside, come back to it a day or two later with fresh eyes and take a look at it to see if there's any adjustments that I need to make. So for the sake of this video, I think we're gonna call this one done. Um, Cause the rest of it is just, you know, little detail work here and there, a little editing here and there. And that really, is an individual preference. Uh, you have to decide um, how far you want to take this, you know, how detailed you want to get it or how photorealistic you want to get it. So that becomes a personal choice. All right, so this one, we're going to call this one done. I hope you enjoyed the process. And uh, if you tried this one, let me know how it turns out. I'd love to know. Um, feel free to use the, um, the, the reference materials that I put on the, on the description. Um, you can download them for free. And uh, you can follow along if you'd like to. As always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video.